the line on that song. But before, just open your your Bibles to Matthew 20, Matthew 10, actually. And when you know, as you're searching for it, let's, let's sing that song out together. It says, I sing praises to your name. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, Lord, for your name is great. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. I sing praises. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. Oh, for your name is great. For your name is great and greatly to be praised. One more time. I sing praises to your name. Oh, Lord, praises to your name. As the trumpet sound, just lift up your right hand to the heavens and just give him what he deserves. Amen, Lord. Amen, Father. Why don't we give a round of applause once again this very evening? Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, praise and worship team. God bless your lives. Continuing blessing each and one of you individually. And before we continue on with today's um, sermon with what God put in my heart to, to share with everyone here today, Greetings from our father in the faith, our apostle. Some call him pastor. Some call him um, their, yeah, their father, their dad. Um, however you have labeled him, receive greetings from him, from also our, from his wife, my, our mother in the faith as well. Um, it's always a big responsibility and a, a great honor when he gives us and delegates to us the responsibility to, to share the word. So, Greetings from him. Greetings from my family, from 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 well, from my family as well. We love you all, and we are here to serve you and not to be served. I may say amen. Well, if you have your Bibles with me, or sometimes I tend to call them holy tabloids or holy iPads, because that's what we tend to use nowadays to look up the Scripture. And if you do, and if you're one of them, go with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 10. Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1 says the following. Summoning his 12 disciples, he gave them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. I'll be skimming through them. James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his father, Philip, Bartholom Bartholome, Thomas, Matthew, the tax collector, James, 
Verse 4 says, Simon, the zealot, and Judas, who also betrayed him. Let's do a prayer to, so we could initiate today's word. Father, I ask of you to speak into our hearts, to speak to each recipient that's here tonight that came with a willing heart to receive your way of word. I ask of you to be glorified, to walk according to your perfect will among this amazing temple in which we happen to be ourselves in right now. I ask of you to, to speak, give wisdom, give prudence, give us exactly the, the rema of your word so that we could walk out of this place filled with your presence, filled with your glory, and at the same time transmit from what has been given to us to grace by grace to give as well. In the name of Jesus and the people of God say, Amen. Amen. I would like to share um, briefly with you characteristics that are essential for, for us to apply. And if the ushers are still standing, please, you may be seated. Characteristics that we are applying to our lives each day that we happen to be doing right now as we speak. The day that Christ came into our lives, the day that his blood was shed upon us, and through him we have salvation and all these marvelous attributes and virtues, since that very day when we accepted him in our hearts, we were called to praise him. Say with me, I was called to praise him. I was called to worship him. I was called to give him my very best. But at the same time, I also was called to be or to partake in the kingdom of God. And being a partaker or a collaborator of the kingdom of God has his characteristics, has his, um, his identity, his manifestations. And we see in scripture, going back to chapter 10 of Matthew, we see Christ calling, summoning his 12 disciples, 12 ordinary men, however you wish to label him. But what drew my attention that the father himself, not only was he, not only did he delegate his son on earth with all divine power and authority, but that same power and authority was also transmitted to his 12 disciples. And we have the good fortune, we have the honor to to have that same power, have that same, um, or, or those virtues that Christ gave to his 12 disciples. I truly believe within my heart, within my spirit, that we are very different from most people here on earth. Not only does the light shine through us, but we actually possess great power. Say with me, I, I possess great power. I possess great virtue, and these virtues um, are not the ones that I'm, I'm meant that we see in Scripture in First Corinthians chapter twelve. Those are gifts of the Holy Spirit. I want to draw my attention today to the gifts of the Son, the the, the gifts that the, the Son Himself, the very Word, gave to His disciples. And once again, verse one says the following: He gave them authority. Say with me, authority. One more time with conviction, with tenacity, authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal. Say with me, heal. Heal every disease and sickness. I see two great marvelous elements that has been granted to the church, to the body of Christ. To those who are part of his workmanship, to those who are part in this amazing development, which I call the gospel of Jesus Christ, God has given the church, God has given us these abilities that are not man-made power, but God-given elements. I would like tonight to give you a different perspective that we are very fortunate. Say with me, I'm a fortunate child of God. I'm very fortunate to even be considered a child of God. Sometimes we conform and we tend to be accustomed to the, to the, the famous saying that we hear every now and days, you were bought by the blood of Christ. Let me tell you, that cliche or that overrated statement 
has a great truth, has a great manifestation. We have the blood of Christ upon us. We have the spirit of God within us. And we hear it every day, whether it's within the Bible or within our loved ones, within our peers, our co-workers, our family members, we hear it. But today I want to give you a different perspective. Not only were we bought with a price, but we were given abilities. Say with me, abilities. Abilities that the world cannot have, that the world also rejected. Let's not forget the book of John. The gospel of John says when, when, when the word became flesh, he was rejected by his own. That's what the word of God says. But the word itself now has given me and you the ability to triumph, to overcome any adversaries that we are dealing with right now as we speak say it with me in an act of faith we're going to exercise our faith this very evening say it with me i have authority say it with me i have authority now here's the million dollar question what are we as a church as a body of christ doing with that authority have we exercised it according to what the scripture tells us or are we just boasting about it one thing is to boast about a vehicle a car that you might own or have but another thing is are you driving it are you putting it into good use are you actually following the manual the guideline say with me i have authority once again the church we are we are a church here aren't we we are the body of christ say with me i have authority and one of the manifestations of that authority is that it gave the disciples, it gave these 12 men the ability to cast out evil spirits. Say with me, I'm a disciple of Christ. If that makes me a follower of Christ, that authority itself is already embedded in me. And that authority has to give its manifestation, not tomorrow, but now. And some of us, we need to freshen up our spirits, freshen up our mind once again, press the reset button, and come to our senses that we have a great power stored in us. Now, religion, God rebuke it, religion has I have, to, I have to say this, and I say it with, with all due respect, but I speak as a whole in general terms. I believe the body of Jesus Christ, regardless of the denomination that we tend to see or hear, I believe the body of Christ has fallen into... Have you seen that mode in your phone that's called snooze? I'm sure some of you know what I'm referring to that you hear the alarm, you're half asleep, half awake, but then you press the snooze button and it allows you to sleep another extra three or five minutes. Are we here today? Or am I the only one that happens to have that snooze option on my phone? And what do we do? We press click and it adds another five or 10 minutes extra of your beautiful sleep. I love to sleep. Believe me, I love to sleep. Especially if, if I go out to eat to this nice cuisine with fresh food, whatever they provide to me. After having a good dinner, I think the last thing you want, I think the last thing that you want to do is just knock out, how we say, fall asleep. Do we agree? But going back to this. Some of us, we, the church has gotten accustomed to press the snooze button. Five more minutes. And those five minutes become another 30 minutes. Now let's apply this analogy to the church. The church in general needs to wake up to the reality, the dimension that in this spiritual world, spiritual realm that we find ourselves is, or fi find ourselves in, we have an authority that's been given from God. Silence is golden. 
Let me read it one more time. Sorry for being so repetitive or very redundant on this reality. But I'm here to awaken you what's been already deposited in your heart very long ago. It says, he gave them authority over unclean spirits. I call this absolute. I call this guarantee. The authority that we have within our lips, our mouth, our mind, and within our spirit, it's 100% guaranteed. There is no refund with God. There's no returns. Have you noticed that? When God gives you the gifts of his spirit, when God gives you a ministry, there's no such thing as, as the return refund service department. What do you do when you buy a product, for example, at Walmart, Marshalls, Kohl's, whatever you go, and you see that what you bought had a little glitch, a little tweak to it. You return, you go back, and they send you where to? Customer service. You return your item with your receipt, they reimburse your money back, and you have the option of keeping whatever was returned to you or just purchasing another thing. I'm here to tell you, Customer service in the spiritual world does not exist in the kingdom of God. It's irrelevant. When God gives you a gift, he makes sure that that gift has the full capacity to be at your advantage, to be a good use for you. But here's the problem. Here's the reality. Within the body of Christ, many, not everyone, but some, have forgotten of that good use called spiritual authority. Are you a follower of Christ? Are we, as a church, do we follow Christ? Do we read the scriptures? Do we devote time to God? Then, automat then that itself gives you that authority. Why do we have a lot of, why do we confront iniquities in our lives? Why are we facing battles, trials, trials and trials? Perhaps it could be that we haven't yet discovered that we have been given this amazing authority. And one of the manifestation is that it gives us the ability, say with me, us, the ability to, to overcome or to cast out on clean spirits are we here are we here amen say with me i have the ability to cast out unclean spirits have you gone to your house lately with faith with conviction or perhaps you got have you gotten the oil yet from your house and said god i'm going to anoint my house i'm going to cast out any demonic presence that perhaps has been there years and years ago or we're just uh, well just just for the sake of having visitors in my house i'll let them reside in there they could hang out if they wish it's besides, I don't like to be lonely. What's, how's our mentality? What are we portraying? Anyways, going back to the message. Say with me, I have authority. Say with me, I have, un I have authority. Now, it gets even better. Say with me, I have the gift of healing. It says it in the very word. Say, I have the gift of healing. Now, one of the amazing things about God, one of his divine tendencies and attributes, that when, he, when you ask for one gift, he gives you two. If you ask for two, he gives you four. If you ask for six, he gives you 12. With God, everything just tends to double up. If you want a house, mark my words, you're going to have two. If you want whatever your heart is, trying for you to achieve know that God always doubles it now we see that God gave us authority say with me authority but God also said I'm going to give the church I'm going to give final call ministries it's not last call final call ministry in the city of Downey 
12145 Woodruff Avenue. I'm going to give them not just the authority to drive out unclean spirits or any demonic rites that perhaps you are dealing with, but I'm also going to give them the gift of healing. And they're going to be able to heal the sick. They're going to be able to heal the loved ones. Why? Because within them, my name is sealed in their hearts. Within them, they could do all things in my name which strengthens me, says the scripture of God. Philippians, I could do all things. Say with me. I could do all things in Christ who strengthens me. And one of the amazing, marvelous attributes that we have is the gift of healing. Say with me, I have authority, but I also have healing. I also have the gift of healing. Let me ask you another question, because this is my home church, and I do have the freedom and the luxury to be myself with you. Let me ask you this question. When was the last time you took the boldness to pray for someone? So he or she could be healed. When was the last time that you had that fervent desire to go help someone who is probably dealing with a physical condition? When was the last time? Look, look at your hands. Look at, look at your hands, please. Look at those beautiful hands that you have. Some women just probably went this weekend to the nail store. I mean, to polish their nails. Some men probably didn't cut their nails for two weeks. And, you know, I think it's time to cut them, don't you think? But when was the last time when you saw your beautiful hands and you said to yourself, wow, I have authority and I have the gift of healing. Really, God? You gave me this? Huh? Don't get me wrong. It's beautiful to decorate our fingers. Have gorgeous rings, little accessories. I understand that concept. It's beautiful. I too like to have rings, but right now, for some reason, I don't have one. But I will soon. Very soon, actually. <laughs> some of you guys caught that, didn't you? <laughs> but when was the last time that you said, God, with these hands that you created, that you molded, I'm here to remind you that I'm also your masterpiece. You made me. You formed me. You made me according to your image and likeness, according to Genesis 1.26. And I'm here to tell you, God, or just to remind you that there's a person that is in need. I have a brother. I have a sister. I have a friend. I have a co-worker that needs a miracle. And I ask you right now to use my life. Allow me to be a mediator of your healing towards my brother and sister. When was the last time? Church of God, Church of Jesus Christ, we were called to be productive 100%. Wherever you find yourself, I want you to ex extend your, your arms as, fa as far as you can. Extend them. Keep extending them. Hold them for a little bit. This reach, according to our, our human per perception, this is how far we supposedly reach. But in God's eyes, I need two examples. I need two examples. Carlos, come up here. Jaime, come up here. Two examples. Oh, up here, up here, gentlemen. These soldiers of God, powerful men of God. Amen. Okay. This is what we're going to do, okay? I'm going to extend myself, okay? Once I extend my, my hands to, to this direction, well, actually, let me be in the middle because this is a good illustration. This is, don't lift your hands here, okay? I'll tell you when to lift them. But when I extend my hands, I want the very tip of your finger to touch my very tip of my finger. But I want you guys to extend your arms, okay? Listen to this. Beautiful. God, you're awesome. You're awesome. According to my human abilities... This is how far my reach is. Not yet, not yet, not yet. <laughs> this is just Pablo here. This is just my human strength. But do you want to see how God sees it? 
You want to see how he sees it? Okay, you ready? I want you to t touch my, the tips of my fingers, but I want you guys to stretch as far as you can. Okay? how God sees you. Thank you, Jen. Oh, man. <laughs> I, 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 I just can't overcome the hump, the obstacle. And God looks and he goes, really? To your right, I have given you authority. And to your left, I have given you my healing. Listen to this, and, and pastor, senior pastor has always mentioned it many times in this pulpit to this lovely congregation. He's always said these words, church of Christ, excel in your faith. Excel in your faith. Because the way how we envision ourselves is very different how the man above, sitting at his very throne, having Christ at his right hand, sees us. Say it with me, perception. One more time, perception. Let's have a kingdom mentality. Let's have a kingdom reality. When we say it's two, for God is for. When we say, God, I want you to multiply me. Bless me with tremendous, overfilled vases. And God says, okay, give me a number. Well, I think seven, just to start off. Not to be so, you know, so spoiled to myself. And God goes, really? That's your number? I think so. And God says, can you give me a bigger number? Can you not challenge me? Let me tell you, the book of, of Malachi, the very last book says, God says these words. This is the only time in scripture where you see these words. God says, put me to the test. It's very quiet here. It's very quiet here. Oh, probably God is ministering. I don't know. But God says in the book of Malachi, put me to the test. And will not the gates of heaven be open to you? Will I not bless you tremendously? For some reason, listen to this. None of us like to be tested. Do we like to be tested? We don't, right? But it, it's necessary at times to elevate our faith to a higher dimension. But listen to this. God loves when you test him. He loves when you put him to the test. Now on that, again, let's go with Matthew because Matthew says, do not tempt the Lord. One thing is to tempt the Lord and one thing is to test the Lord. There are two different scenarios. Church of God, are you ready for this year, the following year, to stretch your faith a little bit more than what you're accustomed to? To get yourself out of that conformity for a couple of seconds and say, God, I'm ready to be stretched. And God says, test me. What do you want? What do you need? Allow me to overflow my blessings upon you. That's why I worship God. Because my perception is very different from him. When I feel weak, he sees me as a strong, valor, courageous individual for his kingdom. Say it with me, kingdom principles. Kingdom mentality. That's what God wants for his people. And I'm sorry if I'm staying on the same chapter, same verse. But I believe this is a great, a great reality that we need to acknowledge if we want to take our faith to another level. We need to stretch ourselves. 
Listen to this. The Bible talks about a man, a prophet called Elisha. I think it was Elijah. That there was, a, there was a widow, a woman there, that she was mourning, she was weeping because her son passed away. And the Bible says that Elijah the prophet came upon that corpse says he believed in God. But listen to this. The Bible says that he stretched himself upon that corpse three times. My goodness, three times. And that body came back from the death. Are we stretching our faith? I'll tell you this. If you stretch your faith just one time, you're not going to get a lot of results if you do it three or more times. And he shreds himself. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just imagining what he said. And says, God of Israel, the most high, the one who never fails, wake up. <laughs> oh, give me 10 more minutes and we're done here. 10 more minutes. Say with me, I have authority. I have authority. I have authority. One more time. I have authority. One more time. I have authority. One more time. I have authority. I have authority. Look to your neighbor and say to him, what are we doing as a church? What are we doing as a church? And say with me, I have the gift of healing. Many people outside are going to come to this church. You know why? I'll tell you this. Very simple. One is because Jesus Christ is the center of our worship. Second, because we have good word here. We have good word. Do you, do, do you agree? God has blessed our apostle with good word. This is no junk food here. We have delicious entrees up here. And the menu, listen to this, and the menu is always changing. It's always changing. Like our apostle said, I'll say it in Spanish because that's what he said. Papa sin sal, no, pero soy papa. <laughs> we have good entree. Now, listen to this. Do you know why many are going to come to this place? Do you know why? Because they're going to want from you from you, from you, to give them a demonstration of the authority and power that was revealed to you. And they're going to they're gonna want an illustration, an example, and you're going to say, oh, yeah, I have everything in my reach, what I could do. But I have the man up above that tends to multiply three and four and five times. Now, here's another reason. Did you know that you are recognizing the spiritual world? Did you know that? It's biblical. And I'll prove it to you right now. It's biblical. You are recognizing the spiritual world. Now, when they say, oh, I don't want to mess with him. No. I tried many ways to come into his head, come into his heart, come into his, his veins. But there's no way of finding a... A glitch in him. So what, what do they do? They get tired and they try to, you know, they try to tempt others. I'll prove it to you. Go with me to the book of Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19. This is amazing. From verse 11, when you have it, say amen. Scripture shows us of a man of God named Paul who was recognized in the spiritual world by the power and authority that was given to him. When you have it, say amen. Acts 19. This is amazing. This is amazing. 
Verse 11. Listen to the word of God. I'm reading from a different translation, so that translation might be very different. But the, but the, the aspect, the concept is the same. Verse 11. God was performing extraordinary miracles. It doesn't say that he was performing miracles. Do, do, we, we are able to see a clear point of reference how God tends to exaggerate. It says, he was performing extraordinary miracles. That version says God was performing through special miracles. <laughs> and listen to this. Ask the person next to you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm, I'm just cutting this. It just, I feel like a, there's a river just building up in me here. Ask the person next to you. Do you have authority? Do you have authority? Jaime, do we have authority? Huh? Do we have authority? Solomon, do we have authority? <laughs> Look what this man that has the same authority as each and one of us. Look what he was doing. God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's... <laughs> huh? Look at your hands, please. Look at those hands. Please take care of them. Can you do me that favor? Can you take care of those hands? And I'm not just saying just go to the, the nail salon. That's what it's called, right? Women? No, no, no. Please take care of these hands. Each finger is very vital. Important. <laughs> Let's continue. God was performing extraordinary miracles by Paul's hand so that even faith cloths or work aprons that had touched his skin were brought to the sick and the diseases left them and the evil spirits came out of them. What is this? A cloth. What is this? There's another, there's another translation that says that God was performing unusual miracles. What does that imply? That God does not work inside a square box. Nor does he like to eat a jack in a box. Just trying to be humorous and funny here. If someone is healing, scripture says... Get an apron, get a cloth, put some oil on it. Pray for it, especially for the individual. And you give them the cloth and you'll see how the miracle will happen. There's a woman here at church. There's, a, there's actually a sister here at church that she told me long ago. She says, she says Pablo, I'm not going to go with your dad again. I go, why? I'm thinking it's something treacherous, something happened. She probably got upset. And she said, no, 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 I cannot be around him. Why? She goes, because every time I, every time your father prays for us and puts his hand on my womb, God just gives me the child. And probably the, the husband and them, they've been battling years and years. She's probably, she was sterile that, during that time. And she says, I already had three kids that your dad prayed for. I cannot get close to him again because if not, it could happen very soon. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, man. Miracles. Listen, miracles shouldn't be something that we tend to be amazed every day. It should be the norm here at church. It should be the common thing, the usual thing. That's what makes us the church of Jesus Christ. That's what makes us special, knowing that we have the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, Lord and Lords here with us. Going back to it, let's go back to the scripture. Paul was doing extraordinary miracles with his hands. Verse Verse 13, then some of the Jewish exorcists attempted to pronounce, listen to this, the name of the Lord Jesus over those who had evil spirits saying, 
I command you by the Jesus that Paul preaches. It's up for a second. God does not use copycats. Did you catch that phrase? God does not use copycats. Those who want to imitate others. Say with me, I am an original. Say, I am an original. God only uses original, genuine children who just want to do his will. Who just simply want to do his will. Now, and we see now a pair of Jewish teachers coming together. Hey, why don't we use the name that Paul preaches? Maybe we could use it to our advantage and do a couple of manifestations and miracles as well. No, brother. God calls genuine, legit children. Let's continue on. I command you by the, by the Jesus that Paul preaches. Seven sons of Siva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. The evil spirit answered. Let's stop for a second. I said to you a couple minutes ago that you are known in the spiritual world. They know who you are. Trust me what I, trust me what I say to you. They know who you are. Look what happened. Look what happened here. Let's continue on. The evil spirit answered them. I know Jesus. And I definitely recognize Paul. That version says, Jesus I know. And Paul I know. But who are you? But who are you? I think one of the saddest things in life is not to be acknowledged by God or by the spiritual world. When they come into this church, they know who you are. And they're not going to touch a single speck of you. Because they know that within your hands. Look at your hands one more time. Please look at those beautiful hands. These hands have the power and the authority to cast out evil spirits and to do marvelous miracles. It goes back. But who are you? I want God for one day to say, son, good servant and faithful you are coming to my presence. Then God to say, we don't know who you are. What? Well, from what city? What hospital were you born? What? No, I don't know who you are. How do we want to be received up there? Silence is golden. I love this. I love it. Then the man who had the evil spirits, listen, leaped on them, overpowered them all, and prevailed against them. So that they ran out of that house naked and wounded. Church of Christ, let's wake up to the reality that we have a great advantage and edge over the things that move in the spiritual world. You're probably, you're probably, you're not the, you're not known in the secular world. Let, let me tell you this, a little, a little story that I just happened to live not so long ago. I had a guest over, a man from Mexico that came to visit. And he wanted to get to know Los Angeles, the city around. And some of the guys, and I have them here as witnesses, they're here. Some of the guys, we, we took them to, to Hollywood so he could know the plays, the whole stars, the, the little walkway with their star, their name, and so forth. So we got there. When we got there, there was a place that was just completely private. There was no public entrance. You were only able to see, I guess, most I guess it's special people from afar. When we got there, there were a couple of artists that we saw. You don't have to raise your hand. Maybe some of you guys know him. We saw Bruno Mars right in front of us. Just right here. The guy that came on the Super Bowl. Standing right there. When he came out of the theater, and I have witnesses here, everyone just got to him. Bruno Mars, give me a, your signature. Let me take a picture. It was paparazzi to the max. 
autograph. He's like, oh, yeah, hey, just walking like this. With his, with his agent, his manager, no more pictures, people, no more pictures. Coming through, coming through. The, the man needs to go to another place. Everybody were watching them. And my friends and I, we were just, okay. They're not watching us. Even better. I don't need to be watched. We were not recognized, nor do we need to be recognized. But this, this, this is my point. This is my point. Here in, the, in this world, if he was recognized through so many people, and if he is not a believer of Christ, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. He probably is. I don't know. But if he's not a believer of Christ, I wonder if he's going to be recognized up there. <laughs> you know, they could set their eyes on man. They could put their attention on man. And they could ignore the church. That's fine with us. Because we know that once we're up there, the main man above, God, Jesus Christ, he's going to receive us. And he's going to say, hey, that's my wife right there. Don't you touch her. Don't you do anything to her. They're going to sit right next to me. And we're going to be recognized. And the angels are going to be, oh, man, I wish I was one of them. I wish I had the privilege to be where he's at. Right now, don't you even worry about it. It's okay. But once we're up there. God's going to give you the best suit that you want. The best dress. Which I don't think there's going to be opposite sex in heaven. We're all going to be one in spirit. But whatever your attire is, God's going to give you the very best. And you'll be like, God, this is for me? And, there, and the angels are going to be asking, how were you able to be right next to the main man above? And you're going to say, he just, it was according to his will. He just set his eyes on me. And I will forever, forever be grateful. Say with me, to wrap things up already, I finish with this. Say with me, Church of Christ. No, say with me, everybody together. I have power and authority. And I have the gift of healing. Out loud, I have authority. Once again, I have authority. And I have power to heal the sick. One more time. I have authority to cast out unclean spirits and the power to heal the sick. How many believe that? This week, our attitude better be, who needs to be healed right now? Who needs a blessing right now? Come to me because Christ is within me. And God's going to use you. Let's all stand up to our feet tonight. Father God, I preach your very word this evening, this night. Thank you for the privilege, the honor of giving us this rema of your word, this revelation that you prepared ahead of time to be given today. I bless this marvelous church, this congregation that's here today, a blessed congregation, chosen people from God, a beautiful lineage. I bless their lives. Can we all just for a couple minutes lift up our, our right hand to the heavens and just acknowledge the Most High, our Majesty, the one who deserves to be praised, the one who deserves our very worship. Father, we give you glory. We give you glory, God. For you deserve it. You deserve every bit of us. You deserve our strength. You deserve our lives. And we come before you. And we come before you this very evening, this very night. 
asking you, God, to put into good use the gifts that you have given us. Church of God, just for a couple of minutes, just begin to worship his name. Begin to glorify his name. Begin to say, God, use me according to your will. Use me according to your will. Use me according, Father, to your divine purpose. Allow me to be an instrument. Allow me to be an instrument of blessings to many others. And allow me to stretch my faith just a bit more, God. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything that you're doing within our lives. In the name of Jesus. Just begin to worship his name. Just begin to give him the honor. Listen to that song, There's Power in the Name of Christ. Together. Power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. Every chain. Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus, there's power in the name of Jesus, break every chain. Is there an individual here who doesn't know? Jesus Christ and would like to give his life for the very first time as his Savior as his Lord if God is calling you for the very first time I'll count to three uh, we would love for you to come up to the altar to come up here at the front so you could be distinguished and partake of the many blessings